Hello! This video was recommended by one of you guys because the swords of blank and blank were interesting to say the least, but one of you guys recommended that I rank all the Theros gods, and that was a really good idea because I have some I have some quandaries with these. <laughs> these some of these gods were not made the same as the others. But if you guys want to see a video like this, just comment down below what kind of video you want to see from me because I do not mind talking about magic. I do it daily at this point, but not on YouTube because I don't have enough time to make that many videos. But make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more of this kind of content. And like I said, comment down below what videos you want to see of me. But subscribing really great helps out the channel i kind of want to get to a thousand subscribers uh, it would be awesome for me but you guys don't care about that that's shenanigans okay well first we got aethrios got a passage okay personally this is kind of biased i think aethrios is awesome like, like especially in 60 card decks if you're playing you're playing that forcing people to make the choice of okay do you want to keep the creature if you don't want to in commander uh, it's it's got this weird niche where you can play it, but at the same time it has better things. I mean, in stuff like Aristocrats stuff, you, you can return things to your hand, yada yada, forcing people to take more damage. I think in Aristocrats, it, does, it actually has that fairly niche where it can survive, and also being 3 mana, eventually being a 5 4th indestructible is actually pretty good. So you know what, I'm going to put this in A tier, I might bring it down to B tier if the other gods rank higher or something like that i i don't know i don't care so uh let's move on to afara god of the polis okay this is weird uh, at the beginning of each upkeep if you had another creature into the battlefield uh, uh under your control last turn draw a card so it is consistent card draw but you have to get creatures in it i actually made a deck kind of based on this if you want to go go see that let me know i can actually give you the deck list for it but Afara, God of the Polis, is all about blinking, making sure that your creatures stay around, but they re-enter the battlefield every single turn, yada yada, card draw, card draw good. Uh, in, in blink decks, it does have that niche, because a lot of these gods do have to have a niche for it. So I would say Afara, in its niche that it does, is pretty decent as a consistent card draw, but it doesn't exactly have, like, in most decks, it doesn't have that oomph that you need that you need to do i'm actually gonna, just gonna put in a b tier just because while it is good at card draw it needs it needs a lot more to make it actually good and playable uh, honestly that's just my opin opinion by the way i mean it made a whole deck where this is the commander but the whole point of that deck was to just make weird infinite combos out of nowhere and just suddenly win so you know whatever next we got erebos god of the dead uh your opponents can't gain life and you can pay two and pay two life and draw a card Honestly, I'm going to say this now. I think this card is not good. I would say in general, I don't think you would want to run this. There are so many other cards that make your opponents not not gain life. Also paying two uh, paying two and two life to draw a card. You can do that with so much more. I mean, it's a consistent like worse Knights Whisper. There's just so much more you can do with this. It isn't directly bad, but like you can play stuff to make that worse. It's so like Tainted Remedy, for instance. Three mana enchantment. Whenever an opponent gains life, they instead lose that amount of life. If you want to do that, something like that, you would rather play that. But Erebos, God of the Dead, I think it just doesn't have that niche that it wants to hit. You don't want to slot this into your 99. Lord knows you're not putting it as your commander because there would be no point. What kind of deck are you running with Erebos? So I would I would put it in D tier. I don't I don't think it hits that level of like you want to put this in your 99. You want it as your commander. You don't want this card you there's so many other cards that do better especially due to power creep but same time your opponent's gaining life they're probably not going to anyway so yeah i would put it in d tier heliod's god of the sun other creatures you control have vigilance vigilance is good but i i will say that all day every day vigilance is good paying four mana to put a 2-2 white cleric enchantment creature token on the battlefield i mean with other enchantment synergies and things that can do pretty good like i said vigilance is good it's like if you're running what mono white enchant enchantments i don't quite know why you would but you know if you wanted to make heliod god of the sun i think this does hit that e heck even in the 99 giving a consistent way to get creatures and vigilance all that i think this is actually pretty good i would almost put in an a tier 
because like i said vigilance good also being able to create more creatures creatures are good too so i think being able to consistently make creatures given having them have vigilance all that i think this is actually really good also four mana perfect number for it perfect number oh we have Eroes, I think that's how you say it. God of Victory. It, creatures you control can't be blocked. So creatures you control have menace. Prevent all uh, damage that would be dealt to attacking creatures you control. This is broken. It forces people to block with two or more creatures because it has menace. And prevents all damage that would be dealt to them is nuts. This can be a complete build around. You are the aggro player. You want this. You... Honestly, I would put this in S tier. You want this card in your 99, your commander slot. You want this. If you're going at aggro, if you're running these colors, I would highly recommend putting them in there, especially if you want a god in your deck. This is really, really good. I think just giving a menace and preventing da damage is insane. I think for four mana, this is almost too overpowered. Also, a 7-4 indestructible? Oh, my days yes sir i i would slot this in a lot of places obviously due to power creep and things you can get a lot better bang for your buck but a four mana everything has menace and attacking basically makes them indestructible is nuts that card is awesome i love eroas Terramatcher, God of the Harvest. Whenever you cast a creature spell, you must search the library for a forest or plains card, put it on the battlefield, tap, then shuffle your library. See, this one's weird, mainly due to the fact that at five mana, this seems underwhelming. I would rather have have this be a, I'd rather have this be a three mana, like, I don't know, two five or something, instead of it being a, instead of it being a five mana, six, seven, destructible, a creature spell also I, i'm not going to be talking about the devotion because most of the time if if this is a, becomes a creature you you're winning the game like it's, it's having your devotion like green and white be less than seven I, if, yikes like you, you have to put a lot into this it's very late game so you're probably just playing this as an enchantment but having an, a five mana enchantment that you cast a creature spell and it goes search for a forest or plains card I mean, it's ramp with more creatures and things, but you'd want to be playing your creatures in the early turns, and it while it does ramp you, you could just be doing so much more with it. I don't actually see where you'd want this. Uh, you can maybe get like a... It, it does help you ramp. You can then play Llanowar Elves, Mis, uh, Elvish Mystics, things like that. But you'd want to be playing them beforehand to then cast this. It being such a late turn, I, I'm going to throw it in C tier. It... It does have kind of a niche, like very small, but are you playing big spells? Are you playing small spells? What are you ramping to? And at that point, you might as well just make all the mana at the same time. And then you're just playing mostly mono green. So green, white, I don't, I don't see, I don't see it. I think it has some niche somewhere, but I don't quite see it. Kranos, God of the Storm. Uh, uh, by the way, Granos, God of the Storm, is personally one of my least favorite gods. Uh, putting it out there, but I'm not going to put bias into this one because yeah, reasons. Reveal the first card you draw on each of your turns. Whenever you reveal a land card this way, draw a card. Whenever you reveal a non-land card this way, it deals three damage to target creature or player. Okay. Letting your opponents know what cards you're drawing is always bad because people can play around it. Sometimes dealing three damage... Ugh drawing a card like possibly drawing two cards each turn sometimes it being a bolt it's too crazy you don't really want this you'd rather just have a card draw spell or a burn spell like a more consistent burn spell this does not work like in most cases this does not work i would rather put anything else in the 99 definitely not the commander slot like aroas I could put that in the commander slot and that would be perfectly fine. But Kranos just doesn't, you don't want this. You don't want to reveal what you're, what you're going to be drawing. And sometimes you draw a card, but you know at least one of them's a land. Uh, or sometimes just dealing three, you only just draw that one card. But then your opponents can play around it. It, it just, honestly, I would put it in D tier. Heck, I almost might, if I made an F tier, I would put it in there. Just because 
Sometimes it's extra card draw, sometimes it's slight removal, but you're also revealing what you're drawing to your opponents? It's, it's not good. Don't put this in your 99, especially for 5 mana. If this was 4 mana, I... Heck, if it was 3 mana, I would severely reconsider. Heck, I'd put it in A tier probably if it was 3 mana. But 4 mana, maybe B tier, I could kind of see it. But at 5 mana, you could be doing so much more on turn 5, 6, whenever you play this. You, you would rather be doing so much more stuff. Because it doesn't really fit in a niche either. It's just kind of eh. For, mo for most of the stuff, I mean, what do you want to put in? A lot of lands, a lot of non-lands, whatever. Eh, I, I don't like this card. Krufix, God of Horizons. I actually do like this card quite a bit. You have no maximum hand size, and if unused mana would empty from your mana pool, that mana becomes colorless instead. Simic wants this. Simic likes to draw a lot of cards, likes to make a bunch of mana out of nowhere, so consistently having all that mana, being able to put it into X spells later on to make bigger X spells, having no maximum hand size because you're drawing so many cards, this card is great. Honestly, I'm thinking of putting it in S tier. I know it's a hot take, but even as your commander, I mean, no maximum hand size, you're going to be drawing a lot of cards if you're going to be creating a bunch of mana. It's just a good, well-rounded Simic card. It does what it needs to do, and more at that point. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think I need to say anymore. It's it's a good, solid card. Simic wants this, and heck, I even have it in one of my decks. Surprise, surprise. It's a it's Simic card draw shenanigans. It's really weird, but whatever. Uh, Mogus, God of the Slaughter. At the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, this deals two damage to that player unless he or she sacrifices a creature. At four mana, I would almost rather just have a, at the beginning of your up, of each opponent's upkeep, that player sacrifices a creature. Because then that means they're consistently removing a creature. Sometimes some decks want that to sacrifice creatures, but dealing two, dam two damage is very underwhelming. I think if it was deal three or heck four, four damage if it was deal four damage to that player unless he or she sacrifices a creature that i mean that could really hurt some decks especially those combo decks that really like their creatures i think that two damage is way underwhelming you have to hit with this 20 times uh because i mean most of the, most decks just don't care that like, sure i'll take the two or sure i'll sacrifice a creature it just doesn't do what it wants to do like you can see what it wants to do, but it just doesn't perform the same way. If if it was changed to like four damage to that player, that would be nuts. And a lot more people would want to run it and it would be a really good card, but I'm going to have to put it in D tier just because it underperforms so much more than you think. Even if it deals a couple damage here or there, I don't think it's worth it in general. I know that it's an enchantment and not a lot of people can run enchantment removal but at the same time whatever if you're running creatures and if you're playing mogus you're probably playing in slightly lower tier i mean lower level of play so you might as well just yeah it's mogus is bad i'm just gonna put it that way mogus is bad uh nylia other creatures control off trample and pay for and target creature gets plus two plus two until on turn it is consistent, gives trample. Obviously, there are other things that can give trample better. Um, I have actually seen this be played before. It's good. Honestly, I, I'd i put it up with Heliod. Trample is good, just like Vigilance. It is a good, well-rounded, being able to buff creatures up to for four mana. I mean, when in doubt, you just buff your creature. If you're not doing anything else, just buff your creature and make it better. It already has trample anyway, so I think this is just a good card. I could see it be played in your mono green stompy deck if you're if a lot of them aren't don't have trample already which i don't know why they wouldn't but i just think it's a good card in general pretty decent card oh uh, we got for uh farika god of affliction um you could pay it doesn't have any other ability besides you pay a green and the black exile target creature card from a graveyard which is a niche already its owner puts a one one snake that has death touch on the battlefield I am adding a, I'm adding a row. I am completely adding a row below. It is, oh, no, what, what happened? What, what did I do? Whatever. That's, that's D tier. Th this is F tier. You never, you never want this. You never want Farika. I mean, 
exiling creature from graveyard. Cool. Great. You're, you happen to hit some reanimator dudes, good creature, but now you've given them a 1-1 one with, one, one with death touch. What are you going to do against that? You're going to block it? You want to sacrifice a creature for them, for them to do it? No, no, not everybody's playing reanimator. Some, a lot of people should be playing reanimation spells, but you just don't want this. No, like most of the time you don't want this. You don't want them to get more creatures out on the battlefield. Heck, aristocrats decks, which might return things from the graveyard, would actually want a 1-1 because then they could sacrifice it to do whatever shenanigans they want to do. This can downright sh get, get yourself shot in the face don't run Farika. Bad card. Just strictly bad card. And it doesn't impact board whatsoever whenever it comes out. You have to pay more mana to then do that thing. I think this is garbage. Hot garbage. And if you think otherwise, let me know. Uh, Phoenix, God of Deception. Creatures you control have tap target. Uh, player puts the top X cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. Or X is that creature's toughness. I've actually made a deck on this. Um... I should actually make a deck tech based on that. It's weird. This this card is weird. In that one niche, in that one deck where this is your commander, this thing actually does pretty good. Like, pretty, pretty good. I mean, Shield Sphere is a zero mana, zero six. So suddenly you can tap that and mill somebody for six. At five mana, it's kind of awkward. It's not a really good card. But in that rare niche, in that really rare niche that you wanted to, it overperforms. So I'm just going to put it in C tier just because it, in that specific instance, it will be an overperformer. But in general, you're not going to want to slot this in your 99. It, and except for that one deck, you won't want to put it as your commander. It's it's weird to say, to say the least. It's just, Phoenix is good. But bad, weird, ah, whatever. We got Perforous God of the Forge. As long as your devotion to red is less than... F oh, yeah, whatever. I'm not going to say that. Whenever Everybody knows Perforous at this point. If you don't know what it is, it's double impact tremors and can buff up your creatures. This card is good. Great. Everybody should be running it. S tier. Impact tremors is amazing. Warstorm Surge is amazing. I don't know if there are any more off the top of my head, but this card is awesome. It's great. Everybody should be playing it. Period. Exclamation mark. Uh, Thassa, God of the Sea. Beginning of your upkeep, scry one. Eh. Pay two, target creature you control can't be blocked this turn. That's good. See, that's good. Because, like, upkeep, scry one, you're basically opting every turn instead of just drawing. That's pretty good. And target creature you control can't be blocked this turn. That's pretty good, especially in a lot of blue. I mean, you're not going to be putting this as your commander. You're going to be putting it as part of your 99. But part of your 99, this is really good. Like, all, like to the point where I'm going to put it in A tier along with the other monocolors. Because it's good. I think all the monocolor gods are just good. They're solid. They do what they need to do. And more. And especially because... Uh, target creature control can't be blocked this turn. Oof. Oh, smack face all day, every day. Uh, we got Xenagos, God of the Reveals. Uh, beginning of combat on your turn. Another target creature you control gains haste and plus X plus X till end of turn. Where X is that creature's power. So it doubles target creature's power and toughness in a gruel stompy deck for five mana. Can you think of another five mana enchantment that doubles not just one, but all of your creatures' power and toughness um, at combat? Yep, it's unnatural growth. I would rather have that. <laughs> I think this card is bad, to say the least. This card sucks, because it just... One creature, that's it. Not like three. Heck, if this was two creatures... I can almost see it be played for five mana, maybe. But this card sucks. It just sucks. <laughs> I, I can't say anything else. Isn't this Clothis? Hold on. Isn't, isn't this Clothis? Hold on. Clothis. Uh, got it. I believe it's Clothis. Uh, yeah, I'm right. Okay. Let's look at Colossus. Uh, beginning of your pre-combat main phase, exile target card from graveyard. It's a land card. Add red or 
blue, I mean red or green. Otherwise, you gain two life and deals two damage to each opponent. In Commander, you know, I think this is pretty good. Oh, this is Theros Beyond Death. That's why. <laughs> Stupid. This is supposed to be regular Theros, like original Theros. Uh, this card's good, obviously, especially with all the fetch lands that are going around because fetch lands are good. Uh, even like your evolving wilds and things, your terramorphic expanses, you, this can hit you for mana every turn, or you just exile a card from a graveyard and you gain two life and deals two damage to each opponent. Sometimes that's all you need. For three mana, this is pretty good, pretty efficient. It slots into basically anything, and if you got nothing better to do, just do two damage to each opponent. Honestly, I think it hits that perfect niche where it wants to do what it wants to do, and if it doesn't, then... You're playing it wrong. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like the tier list and think this is all good, fine, and dandy, then like and subscribe. If you have any complaints about it, do get out in the comments. Why? Because I don't care. And if you have another thing that you want me to rank, just let me know because I will be glad to do it. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.